Hey, how's it going? Li Flies Mike here. Now, um, I hope everyone has had a great fishing season. It's not over yet. Um, unfortunately, I think our chances uh, for any more Albies is done. Again, great year. Uh, thanks for everybody coming up and um, you know, tell me how much you enjoy the Albie videos and whatnot. Now, we're going to be revisiting a fly that we tied about. Uh, we made a video on the Deceiver Special. It's a the deceiver we tie for saltwaterflies.com a couple years back after uh, getting in contact with Chris this is one of the first flies that we started tying for him commercially for his website and if you haven't checked out saltwaterflies.com I've been buying materials from from over 20 years great place I don't get any money for promoting them or nothing I just love doing business with them tying flies and uh, they have one of the probably best you know selections of saltwater fly tying material hooks all of that around so go check them out but this fly, the Deceiver Special, it's one of my favorite flies. I tie thousands of them a year. I'm catching, you know, schoolie bass here on the shores all the way to catching giant trevally off somewhere exotic. This fly produces, it's a classic, obviously, lefty cray. Rest in peace, greater this fly. It's probably one of the most well-known saltwater flies around, and I always consider it to be one of the, um, the first flies that someone should learn how to tie when tying a saltwater fly. I'd say the two flies, Clouser Minnow and Deceiver. So again, this is just how I tie it. It's not too different from a normal lefties deceiver. It's almost identical. It's just, uh, I figured I'd do an, a more updated video with our new camera setup so you guys can kind of have a, a better idea how we go about um, tying this fly. So let's get right into it. All right, so to get started, we'll go through the materials. First off, Mustad C70SD. Big game hooks, size one odd. Got some uh, white bucktail, yellow bucktail, olive bucktail, white and American rooster cape in white. Great hackle. Peacock curl, and some size 3 16th adhesive eyes. And then some pearl crystal flash. We'll also be using Bill's body braid. You can use silver, pearl, gold, whatever floats your boat. We're going to be using some Danville's two tendon ear flat wax nylon. Great thread. Nice and strong. Again, you can head over to saltwaterflies.com to find all this stuff. Got my right bobbin here. We're going to lay a thread base down and we're going to go right back to the hook point. I always like laying a thread base down, give something for the material to grab onto so it's not spinning on the hook. So you can see the cape here. The feathers are nice and uh, nice and wide. They're also very stiff. So it makes for a very good uh, deceiver hackle. Of course, in the water, it's going to breathe. You can see the cape has everything from fairly large feathers, which were great for some of the larger deceivers that we tie, like the Baja Sardina Deceiver that is also available on saltwaterflies.com, all the way down to, to much smaller hackle, which is great for smaller deceivers if you're trying to tie a uh, Glenn Mickelson style slim deceiver for bay anchovy or silver side pattern. Um, but what we're gonna do is for these one odds these flies need to be right around four inches So we're actually gonna take some hackle and I'll show you it's pretty easy You can cut the patch in half if you want or you can kind of just pull some out if you're really gonna be tying a lot of uh, a lot of these I suggest kind of prepping them ahead of time by pulling a bunch of the uh, Size feathers that you're looking for but essentially we're gonna be pulling out some hackle from the middle here. You can see again This hackle is nice and stiff so this fly needs to be right around four inches long so when i'm tying commercial orders i always like to make sure a good reference point you know you have your from the hook point right so we're just going to go and see the so four inches is right at the end of this little magnet here that they have on the regal so we're just going to use that ever as a reference now we start off with a little white bucktail now i don't always use bucktail at the base when i'm tying these more traditional style deceivers i always tie a little bucktail in but uh, with some of the slimmer deceivers that uh, I tie, sometimes you can omit the bucktail. But um, with this webbier lawner hackle, it's uh, it's good to have a little base of bucktail down just to kind of help uh, stop the feathers from fouling, even though these are very stiff. We're just gonna take this, tie a little uh, bunch of bucktail in, and it doesn't need to be very long or a lot, just uh, kind of giving a base for the hackle. So now for the hackle, what I like to do, the way I do it is you can just take them and tie them in. Uh, one at a time, two at a time. I like to take my time, but what I do is I, uh, I always kind of prep the feather. So I know, for instance, this needs to be four inches, which is right at the end of this magnet here. I apologize, my vice is a little dirty. This gets used quite a lot. 
as you can imagine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my fingers and hold it where I know I'm going to tie it up to, and I just strip the hackle like so. Is it necessary? No. It makes things a little bit easier, in my opinion. When you're doing this, you know, tying 50 to 100 of these at a time. So you can, again, ahead of time, kind of prep all the feathers. So one thing with deceivers, you can see we tied the curve of the feather inward, right? So now we're going to take this next feather and you can see again the curve. There's a natural curve to each feather. We're going to take that. We're going to go curve to curve so that they're kind of supported on either side. They hold each other up. Again, I'll strip the hackle just to make it easier for, so I know where to tie it in. We're going to try and tie this uh, straight on the hook. Make sure the feathers aren't twisting. You want these feathers to be nice and straight, kind of like so. A uh, little trick you can do is the stems are pretty thick on this uh, hackle. So what you can do is you can kind of tie one hackle a little bit lower on the shank, and then you'll have room for the next... Uh, the next feather on top you can kind of stack them so they lay flat what you don't want is you don't want this hackle to kind of twist either out or in like that you want it to be nice and flat like so we're not trying to tent them we're trying to do a classic deceiver tail so again and i always tie my deceivers with uh, two hackle on each side we're going to take our other hackle in here and you can see that one kind of just went right on top of this let's see if we can you can see how I kind of stacked the stems there, so it's a little bit easier to kind of deal with. I don't know if you can see, there's two stems there stacked. Makes things a little bit easier to have a reference. And I wait till the end to cut the uh, the stems off there, at the base of the hackle. So we'll tie our last feather in on the opposite side, so that's two on each side. And I tie that right up to around where the head's going to start. Now, the reason why I tie this up to about here is we're going to wrap this with Bill's body braid. And we don't want um, there to be an uneven bump in the braid. So we want to make sure that we tied our material all up to a certain point, right? This is where the head's going to generally start around. So when we wrap our body braid uh, after we tie our flash in, it'll be a nice, flat, even body braid. Just to have a better look. Okay, so now we're going to take some crystal flash here. Now, a little side note, um, when we were talking about how we want this fly to be tied for the website, Chris made a note that he likes to have the flash a little bit shorter than the tail, right? So we're gonna take about three pieces of uh, crystal flash or four, and you can see this is pretty long, so what I do is I take it and I fold it in half, right? And then I'm just gonna take this and tie this in like so while kind of splitting the hackle you can see we're going to be using our thumb to kind of spread that hackle up i mean that uh, flash apart so again fold it tie over and then i like to just spread my use my thumb to spread that flash on either side and then what we're going to do is we're just going to cut it about a quarter of an inch half an inch before the end of the hackle and what that'll do is you know if you're out casting to breaking fish you know you won't have to worry about that flash um fouling around the hook shape all right so we'll take our bill's body braid here again great material this is all i use for deceivers we're just going to take this and tie this in again tying right and we're going to take a little bit of super glue this bottle gets quite a lot of use as you can guess while holding the thread keeping it towards the uh the front here we're just going to wrap nice and neat wrap this body braid and you can see why we all tied the material up to one point we have a nice clean even body for our braid now and then we're just going to wrap off i go two in the back two in the front real easy and we just tie that in like so okay so for bucktail now we're going to tie some uh some hair on the bottom uh, this particular coloration is going to be white on the bottom a little bit of yellow and then olive on top with some peacock girl um so a lot of times people ask me where in the tail do you cut the hair uh, depends on the tail. A lot of the hair on this tail, for instance, is all pretty soft. It's all pretty much the same up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, uh, a section, probably about half the width of a pencil, and I'm just going to cut that off. You know, you're going to have to look at each bucktail. When it comes to bucktails, you know, sometimes you need to look at them in person. For something like this, you really don't need any hair that's too fancy. You can keep that stuff for the hollow ties and whatnot. But, um... Yeah, it, it, you're going to have to feel each tail out and feel where the softer and stiffer hair is. It's going to take time, but maybe we'll do a video on that on one day. Comment down below if you if you want that going over bucktails. So we're going to take our bucktail and we're going to tie this in. Now, I only want this hair to go back about 
maybe one third or about halfway along the feathers. Uh, I'm gonna go about like one third. So I don't want the hair to be too long. It'll stop it from fouling as often and uh, kind of give it a better profile because we kind of want this to taper down. So we're just gonna take our bucktail here and neatly tie this. And the reason why I like the 210 uh, denier flat wax nylon, it is uh, nice and tough, so you can really apply some pressure. And then we're gonna take our thumbnail here, and we're just gonna spread that white hair along the bottom half of the fly. So now we got our white hair. And uh, if the hair's flaring a little, you gotta realize we're gonna glue the eyes on here, and we can control it when we hit it with the light. That's kind of perfect. This fly, we like to go with the you know, it's kind of in between anywhere from like a, you know, from a peanut bunker to a, a silver side. It's pretty versatile, you know, it's not too sparse, not too bulky. So we'll take some yellow bucktail next. Nice and bright. We don't want a lot. We just uh, want a deep, you know, enough for, to where that yellow peaks out. Just kind of give it a little bit of a color blend in there, you know. So we're going to take our yellow hair here. And again, not too much. You can kind of stack it in your hands if you need to. You can pull the longer hairs and then uh, kind of restack them if any hairs are too short or too long. So we're just gonna cut this, tie that on top. This is probably about a third of the amount of white bucktail, maybe half at most. And we're just gonna take our thumbnail and spread that yellow around. So now that yellow kind of evenly spread on the top. And again, that yellow is just there to give it a little color. Nice olive. All right, so we're gonna take our olive bucktail now and we're gonna tie that in. Again, a little bit more than the yellow, but not too much. We don't wanna overdress this fly. You know, too much or too little bucktail will certainly affect the way this fly swims. I'd rather have it be a little sparser than too overdressed because if the fly has too much material, it's not gonna swim properly. But so we're gonna take our olive bucktail here. That looks perfect. About the same length as the yellow and white. You can always go a little longer on top if you want to. We're just gonna make sure we wrap that in. Starting to build a nice little head here. And I'm just gonna spread that bucktail around, but we want that yellow to be peeking out on the sides. You don't wanna fully cover that yellow. So you can see both sides have that yellow streak coming out the side. Again, that's just gonna give it a nice little blend in color. So now we're almost done. It's almost ready to be glued. We're gonna take some peacock curl here. And then again, it doesn't need to be too long. So if you have some really long peacock curl, you can put that off to the side for your larger flat wings you know if you're tying a razzle dazzle tying a uh, big bucktail deceiver popovic style you can save that i have tons of it so i'm not too worried about it so we're going to take our peacock girl here and you can see i'm just going to stack these if some of them are too long you kind of stack them so you want them to be around the same length that they don't have to be perfect you know little unevenness is actually a good thing give the fly a little bit more of a natural look in my opinion so we're just gonna take that hurl, about six, seven, eight strands, whatever, dress it to uh, your liking. Don't wanna overdo it. There we go. We got our peacock curl on there. All right, so now we can whip finish. Do that like so. I've had people ask me during the stream and in videos how to do that what I do is I I use my fingers I don't use a whip finisher it's very simple you just lay the thread over your fingers do a triangle like so and then you one two oh, without doing that you one two and that's more than enough you don't have to sit there and whip finish 30 times around it we're gonna cover it in a uh, UV resin anyway so now we're gonna take our eyes again 3 16 gold eyes here and now how I lay the eyes on there first things first I take a little super glue now even though we're gonna be putting UV resin and covering the head on this fly I like to take a little super glue when I put these eyes on here and I like to lay that dab just a little bit in between the thread and the bucktail itself and when I lay the eye on here on that super glue without having it stick all over my fingers I'm gonna lay that eye right in between the bucktail and thread now the reason I do that is um, when we glue it, it'll make the fly not only that much more durable because both some of the bucktail and the whole thread wrapping is uh, here we go. It's the problem with super glue. Not only is it all coated, but um, it'll kind of allow me to get the shape of the hair that I want. So we got our eyes on there. We didn't get too much super glue on our fingers. So success. 
I just want to make sure these are lined up front and back top and bottom okay, looks good now we're ready to glue the head so again UV resin can be a little messy just as epoxy so you got to be careful with it now you can see we have little gaps and stuff in there uh, between the eyes I want to make sure all this is filled up I like going with a pretty nice round uh, head when it comes to the resin um, some people make like making them a little slimmer I like kind of having the pretty fat head on there all right so we're gonna go with a decent amount of resin again I like to make sure I right where I lay it down is kind of right in between the, uh, the hair and the thread now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my bodkin here and I'm just gonna kind of coat this making sure I get all the way down to where the thread wrapping ends try not to get any in the hook eye of course And I'm just going to make sure that the resin goes all the way back past the eye onto the material. Again, it's just going to make it that much more durable. Now, you want to be careful. Don't don't apply too much. Um, and take your time, you know. The great thing about resin is, unlike traditional epoxy, which we used to have to deal with, you know, 10 years ago, is that, um, you know, you can work with it, take your time, get it to the shape that you want, and then when you hit it with the light, it's good. So you can see the head's pretty nice and even. There's not too much resin on either side. We got the eyes coated. Everything looks good. Grab my light here off the charger. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this with light. I'm going to slowly spin this. And I like to just give it a light, uh, a light exposure to the light at first. And then I'll hit it on uh, each side for about eight or nine seconds. I'd say really within 10 seconds with a strong enough light, um, it should be tack free and uh, nice and hard, ready to fish. That's why I like solar res. If you have the opportunity to take these flies and put them outside under direct sunlight before fishing them or, um, you know, before I'll ship these out to uh, Hootsatonic, I'll stick these out under sunlight for, you know, half an hour or so. And it just even cures it that much more, so. All right, it's looking pretty good though. I think this should be good to go. Let's test. No tackiness at all, you can see. Perfect. So that's the Deceiver Special. Great fly. Chris has had customers all over the world take this fly and go catch fish from Giant Trevelli to uh, striped bass here on our northeast shores so again if you're interested in purchasing these flies you can head over to saltwaterflies.com you can also find all of the materials which i'll put a list down below with a link to saltwaterflies.com you guys can head over there check it out again thank you for tuning in and watching hopefully you enjoy the video subscribe if you want more fly fishing and tying content and until next time tight lines